Hudson needed four to reach the milestone, but he made short work of the task by booting them all in the first quarter against Collingwood. 1968 was also a remarkable year for Melbourne wingman Brian Dixon, who became the first Melbourne player to chalk up 250 games, a record broken only last year by Robert Flower. At the end of the season, South Melbourne's Bobby Skilton joined VFL legends Hayden Bunton and Dick Reynolds as the only three-time winners of the Brownlow medal. But he obviously earned the honour after absorbing plenty of punishment. Ron Barassi, another household name, added yet another string to his bow by coaching Carlton to a premiership win against Essendon in only his fourth year with the Blues. The match was a nail-biter for most of the afternoon, and even though the Blues didn't kick a goal in the final quarter, their five behinds ensured victory. And after 72 years of league football, another first was produced in the match. It was the only time the losing grand final team had kicked more goals than the victors. The Bombers booted eight goals five, three points shy of Carlton's 7-14. Geelong's Doug Wade kicked 100 goals for the first time in his career during the encounter against Footscray in 1969. He achieved the feat five years later, this time with North Melbourne. 69 was also the year Fitzroy's 31-year-old skipper Kevin Murray became one of the most popular winners of the Brownlow medal, 14 years after he joined the Lions. A year later, 1970, the VFL season was extended to 22 rounds and sides now played each other twice during the year for the first time since 1924. In the opening round, Richmond and Fitzroy turned on a blue-blooded performance for royalty, with the Lions causing an upset by beating the reigning Premier. Fitzroy had moved to the Junction Oval and didn't have much success in the second round of the season when they played host to St Kilda at their new home. Ironically, the Saints' 110-point win was bigger than any they had enjoyed during the 64 years it was their home base. Round three of the 1970 season was a special one for the league because their showpiece, VFL Park, was ready to host its first match, contested between Fitzroy and Geelong, and it was the Cats who recorded an historic victory. In round five, a fortnight later, the spotlight was at the Western Oval, where Mr Football Ted Whitten played his 321st and last game for Footscray. Well, Ted, how does it feel uh, to be walking down this lane, approaching the game, for, approaching the ground for your, for your last game? It feels bloody awful, David. Does it? Does it? And I feel very happy about it at all. You've been in front all day, you've got to stay there. Are you going to sit there? Come on, Ed. got a big the season, Collingwood and Carlton had emerged as the dominant teams, and the grand final was one of the VFL's most remarkable matches. A record crowd of 121,696 watched the Magpies build up a seemingly unbeatable 44-point lead at half-time, and thoughts of the last flag in 1958 came flooding back to the black and white army. But at half-time, Carlton coach Barassi took an enormous gamble by insisting his players hand pass at all costs and introduced reserve Ted Hopkins onto the ground. Hopkins fired up his teammates, and by three-quarter time, the margin had been whittled down to just 17 points. The Blues' onslaught continued in the final term, and they kicked five goals to one to steal the match by 10 points in one of the truly great VFL fightbacks.